Are you ready, sir? Great. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks for coming. Later today, I'll be introducing Bill 9, the Public's Right to Know Act. Now, Bill 9 will make it easier for Albertans to find information about crime in communities throughout the province. And as the, the name of the bill indicates, people have a right to know how crime is affecting their community. And today, we'll be delivering on a platform commitment to introduce legislation designed to uphold and to strengthen that right. Now, if passed, this legislation would require the provincial government to report currently available crime and justice system metrics and to do that uh, annually. This would involve publishing information like police-based crime data on the Government of Alberta website and by tabling this information in a report to the legislature every year. And this annual reporting requirement would enhance transparency by creating the expectation among the public that the government will provide Albertans with this information and to ensure that it's easy to find and to ensure that it's easy to understand. And we know that from, from talking to Albertans that there is a strong appetite for this kind of information as well as valid reasons for, for knowing it. And d during a, um, a tour of the province in 2019, my predecessor, the former Minister of Justice and Solicitor General, Minister Schweitzer, heard from many rural Albertans who were concerned about crime. And they told him at the time when he did this tour in 2019 that they wanted more information about what's happening in their communities. So transparency is, uh, transparency is certainly a principle that's worth upholding, but increased openness isn't the only benefit of legislation like this. There's a saying that goes back centuries that knowledge is power. And there's a, a reason that expressions like that have become uh, so popular. It's because it's true. Information and easier access to it empowers folks to make better decisions. So by improving access to crime data, this, uh, this improved access could help decision makers at various levels to develop policies as well as to take actions that are based on evidence. A troubling crime trend could expose gaps in services and to lead to the development of new initiatives or new enforcement strategies. For example, a rural crime watch group may make different decisions about the need for volunteer patrols or public awareness efforts after taking a look at and, and studying the crime data in their communities. At a more basic level, this is also about empowering Albertans to make better decisions about their own personal safety. Knowing property crime statistics may help someone decide to lock their car or their, their home instead of leaving it to chance. And what these examples have in common is that in both cases, having access to reliable information can bring about better outcomes. A better informed public can help build safer communities for everyone in Alberta. And it starts with ensuring that folks have easier access to information that they're entitled to know. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, is there any questions uh, from the room this afternoon? Seeing none, uh, we'll go to the phones. Uh, caller, can you, please put, uh, can you please put through the first caller? The, uh, the first caller is uh, Michelle Belfontaine, CBC. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Minister. I'm just curious about why you need legislation to publish this information. Isn't this something you can do anyway? It is something that could be done, but I think part of it is to have some certainty and some consistency, as well as fulfilling our, our campaign commitment. This is something that we heard from many different organizations. And in fact, because I pointed out this is something that was in our platform commitment, so it's not just Minister Schweitzer's rural crime tour of 2019, but even as we were leading up into the, the election, hearing from many different communities that they wanted to have some certainty and they wanted some consistency in how the, um, the crime is, is going to be or the crime data is going to be reported. So we have a lot of different sources of this data and a lot of it is, is I guess, um, judging these metrics in, in different ways. So by providing this consistency and having it easily accessible as a report to the legislature every fall, or sorry, every, um, every year starting this fall in 22, it provides that certainty and that consistency for those folks. Thank you, Michelle. Do you have a follow-up? Yeah, I do. Um, 
but I'm wondering, Minister, you know, with all the things that are going on right now, if the government could use legislation to solve, why does why why is this kind of bill needed? Like, what, why would the legislature? Why should the legislature take up precious time debating something like this? But, which you can do anyway without legislation. So I'm still trying to really understand the purpose of this bill. Happy to answer again. The, the the reason is for that consistency. We have so many different sources of crime data available throughout the province that are not keeping these metrics in a consistent way. And so for everybody to, to be able to judge the, the crime data, for example, in their community as opposed to another community, and for us to make it easily accessible, um, and for people to know that it's going to be legislated and required in, in a uh, report that's tabled with the legislature every fall, as well as being available on the website, is providing that, that certainty and, and that transparency that the folks are, are craving. Um, I, I would, look, for me, listening to Albertans throughout the province before I came into this role, but especially during and since I've come into this role, people um, uh, are incredibly concerned about crime in their communities. And um, I, I think... Um, I think for anybody to, to say that um, crime and the reporting of crime data in their communities is, is not important for the legislature to be discussing is, is quite, uh, quite wrong. I, I think it's, it's absolutely wrong, not, not, from, not from the Albertans that I'm talking to. Thank you, Minister. Please put through the next caller. Next caller is Alana Smith from CP. Please go ahead. Oh, hi there. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, in terms of reliance, I guess, on local police forces or other justice organizations, how will this data come to the province? Is it going to be through them, and will there be, like, added, uh, I guess, resources for them to make sure that they can give this data to the province? It, th that's a good question. Uh, so many different um, sources of information, and so it's going to be up to, to government now to um, be working with all these different sources to, for us to be able to, to collate the information and all those sources and for us to be then uh, setting the, the metrics and reporting the, the data in the communities. So we, we will have to work with many different um, organizations to be able to, to collect this information. Excellent. Alana, do you have a follow-up? Yes, I do. Um, I'm just curious if this will be anything like the Alberta Substance Use Surveillance data. I know that that's, you know, one of the most robust in the country, but uh, at that time, it was also promised that it would be timely reporting and quite consistent, but we haven't seen that with substance use. So will we run into the same issues with uh, with reporting for, for justice, for example? Well, uh, I say this. For, for the uh, what we're talking about today with Bill 9, the Public's Right to Know Act, it would be beginning with an annual report. We have had internal conversations about whether in the future we can m report that in a more robust way. But right now, the, the minimum requirement is going to be for future governments to be tabling this report every year um, in, at the, with the legislature. Um, but I, I do agree that there are opportunities for us to, to look at in, in future years how it's reported on the website, um, how often it's reported on the website, and whether we can, we can be more robust in how we present this information and how often we present it to Albertans. Thank you, Alana. Uh, please put through the next caller. Caller is uh, Ashley Jono, Post Media Edmonton. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, I'm wondering, I just want to make sure I understand. The, the data that would be reported under this bill, is any of it new data, or is what you're doing basically gathering data we already have so that it can be found in one place? Well, it's it's... It's a little bit uh, of, of both, actually. So the, the difficulty is that we do have many different sources of, of data. Some of them actually are not right now publicly available to, to Albertans. And sometimes the, the metrics are not consistent um, from, from one source of, of the information to another. So it's, it's about us making sure that all of it is publicly available, but also making sure that it's, it's consistent and, and easy for folks to, to understand in their communities. Excellent. Do we have a follow-up? Yeah, can you talk a little bit about what data would be new that we can't, that we don't have currently, and a little bit about what work is being done to make sure numbers are reported consistently across the province? Sure. I mean, an example might be um, uh, violent and serious crimes, as well as property offenses. There's a, a lot of information on how this can be broken down, and in certain communities that isn't already publicly available. So it's about making sure that we are collecting that information and, and making sure it's available. I, sorry, I may have missed, I think there was a second question. 
in your supplemental that I may have missed. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering what work is being done to make sure that the data is being reported consistently so that people can make, you know, apples to apples comparisons because different people gather data different ways. That, that's a great question, and we'll have time. I mean, the, the first report is going to be tabled in, in the fall. So it's going to start with this bill, and, uh, and then once it's passed, it's going to be up to, to us and, and uh, Justice and Solicitor General then to, to, to work on that report and, and ensure that it is going to be easily understood by Albertans and uh, tabled uh, this fall. Excellent. We have time for one more caller. Last question is from Dan uh, Singleton, Great West. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I wonder if you could talk a bit more about the um, timeline when you're going to be putting stuff on the website. Um, is that uh, be decided on that yet? Well, the first report is going to be this fall, so we'll have some time to be able to now start uh, once this passes. Um, but uh, I think to to M Michelle's point, uh, we can begin doing this work now and um, making sure that it is tabled then uh, for for this fall. Once it is tabled, then it'll be available on the website. And uh, as I said to, um, I can't remember whose question it was, but to somebody else's question, for us to be able to look at um, other ways in which we can start reporting this on, on the website in a more robust way. But for, for at least for, for this year, for 22, this fall, it'll be, um, the website uh, will be reporting, or publishing, I should say, the report that will be tabled to the legislature. Excellent. Dan, do you have a follow-up to close off uh, today's press conference? Nope, that's good. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Excellent. Thanks so much for everyone for coming and uh, have a great day. Thanks.